What's up? I'm Sugar Free, and I'm the DPS for the Vancouver Titans. What's up? My name is Crimzo. I'm the support for the Vancouver Titans. Hey, my name is Chris, otherwise known as Legendaily, and I am a Twitch streamer and, or was a Twitch streamer, but also a full-time content creator. What do you do on your days off and how do you rest in order to be ready for the next day? Uh, yeah, for my off day, I usually stay away from the computer as much as I can. Um, I'll just go outside, do some shopping and stuff like that, just take a mental break from the game before I have to start playing again. It usually helps out a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty similar. I, I like to take uh, some time off away from the game. Um, maybe play for like maybe like an hour or two. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I like to enjoy my off day as like an actual off day. So, you know, I'll go hang out with my girlfriend or, you know, go get dinner or just kind of like chill and uh, make sure to kind of like take that little break that I can. Yeah, so back for me when I was uh, streaming very heavily, uh, I actually only stream, I only gamed when I streamed. So the days when I wasn't streaming, I actually wasn't, wasn't gaming at all. And I think putting that like rule there was what allowed me to really focus on gaming, but also the streaming, but also not like, I didn't like the idea of just gaming by itself. So um, on my rest days, I just made sure I was away from the computer. Gym was something that took up a lot of my time. And honestly, being around people who are also not gamers helped me a lot because then my conversations on my rest days wasn't always about gaming. What is the most important thing to take away from creating a good balance between gaming and your personal life? Um, I think it's, it's just important to kind of like think about kind of like your situation and what's kind of like going on with yourself. Um, obviously everybody's different. Everybody has different obligations and things that they need to be doing. Um, but you definitely, like there definitely has to be some sort of balance to keep it like, kind of like sustainable. You know, you can't just like sit at your computer and play games for 12, 13 hours a day and go to bed and that's it. Maybe you like forget to eat even or something like that. Um, so I think it definitely, it's really important to kind of like set um, like times to kind of step away and, you know, do, maybe hang out with your family, your friends, or maybe your girlfriend or whatever. Um, so I think as long as you can sort of figure that out and it's going to be different for everybody. I think it's absolutely like vital to be able to keep going. Yeah, I think uh, for me to add on to that, I, I find that anything in excess is going to not be good for you. So for me, one of the cues that I kind of like figure out whether something is consuming my life or not is, is it taking away my sleep now? Am I skipping meals to do more of this? Um, and essentially, if, as long as I have those things in check, there's no, when it came to gaming, there was no problem for me to game more, but definitely being able to, to like you said, think about your situation, what, what works for you. I think also knowing your personality. Now me personally, if I get into something, I will dedicate my entire life to it and I'm gonna go all in. So the challenge with gaming for that is I would sacrifice a lot when I was really invested into a game. And I think, um, when I got into other things, such as going to the gym, for example, it was very hard for me to juggle both. So for someone like me, who's very, I guess you can say I have an addictive personality, I have to choose where is my time better allocated. And essentially that's why I spend most of my time now in the gym. Yeah, that's essentially what Crimzo said pretty much. Like uh, just doing things, you can't sit on the computer all day, it's gonna hurt you a lot. So it's always good to have like routines and stuff like that. Um, you know, like after practice, one day we'll go play basketball or something like that, just to take a step from the computer. And I think that helps a lot. When you were a kid, did your parents set the limit for gaming or was that something you learned as an adult? Um, for me, I had an older brother growing up, so I was kind of scrapping with him a lot of the time for kind of like screen time. Um, my parents weren't super involved in terms of like limiting. Uh, so it was mostly just a battle between me and my brother. Um, he would win because he's bigger. Um, but overall, like my parents have been pretty supportive as well. Um, I think they just want me to kind of grow. And I think as long as like, I'm not just like, as long as I'm working towards something, I think they're very going to be very supportive of it. Um, and you know, I'm just, I'm glad to kind of have them in my corner. Yeah, no, it was, it was literally the same thing with me as well. Like I had two other brothers and we had like one laptop. We would fight over who gets to play Minecraft first and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, my parents didn't really care at all. Just like whoever wins first for the laptop. Wins. 
So I'm the opposite. I'm actually the older brother for me. So anytime I wanted to play, I pretty much got it. Now, when we were, when I was younger, younger, like probably still in elementary school, they definitely put a limit there. But as I got older and I gained more autonomy, I, I, they had less say over whether I was gaming or not. And it wasn't really until I was streaming like pretty much five days a week for like minimum five hours a day. And just that whole time was just nonstop talking because I'm streaming and then the gaming too and then juggling the both. And then that's where I was like, whoa, like I need to put a limit. How important is it to do a gaming detox and how has it helped you fall back in love with video games? Right, so um, I don't know if you, have you guys ever done the gaming detox before? So I, I had this like um, pretty much at the time when I was uh, streaming less and less and less. Uh, I had to find a way for me to kind of like disconnect from the gaming because I was finding myself playing but not enjoying at all. So I started this thing called the Gaming Detox and pretty much for 90 days straight, no games, no phone games, no computer games, nothing for 90 days straight. And um, went through that and after the 90 days, I played a game and it was like the best thing ever. It was. It just felt like I was playing as a little kid again, and it was like, whoa, what are all these games? In 90 days, there's a lot of updates that happen to whatever you're playing, so it, it almost feels like a completely different experience. And at the same time, there's new games that come out that you are catching up to. So everything feels fun again. I'm, I'm a little bit curious. Um, what did you do during those like 90 days to kind of stay away from the games? Right. Yeah, so it's very interesting because during that period, especially when you're a person who's just like gaming every day, you come to realize how much free time you have. And it's just like, I, I was still going on the computer. Now, the other things that I did have as hobbies, especially before the pandemic, was I was into photography. I was into videography. I was, and as a product of that, I was into photo editing and also video editing. And I loved fitness. So I kind of just started combining all of those together. And I started making fitness content um, and since I also do like social media full time, a lot of it was just filming videos and trying like, okay, I was a streamer, I'm going into fitness, how do I close that gap and make it like my own thing? That's cool, yeah, that's really awesome. I mean, for me, like I'm trying to think of stuff that I can kind of do like outside the game. I think the most interesting thing for me would be like books. I feel like there's so many good books out there that like I, I'm not really sure like what to read or like what to, you know, get what, into. What have but... you read so far? Um, actually, like the most recent book that I read was honestly last year. It was the book on Phil Jackson from the NBA, the coach who won like, I think it was like nine championships or something like that. So kind of like his whole like philosophy and how he saw like competing and all that stuff. So I think that kind of stuff is really interesting, but I'm also like in a fantasy. I think that, I mean, there's got to be some insane fantasy books out there. Um, so I think that's definitely something that I'm personally going to be looking into kind of like moving forward to like you know, kind of separate myself away from the games a little bit. Um, so, I mean, I'm excited to hopefully get into that soon. Yeah, I don't, I, I still like video games. I, <laughs> I haven't really thought of anything like, yet to do like after, or if I try to detox, not really too sure. And I'm into some sports and stuff like that, but can't imagine doing that the way I'm doing video games. Yeah. Honestly, like I just say that if you are enjoying games right now and it's not getting away with anything, just go all in, bro. 